Hey everybody, it's Tim again. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Uh, today I have another non-book uh, video for you. Uh, I want to go over another passion in my life, which is robotics. Uh, for those of you who don't know me uh, very well personally, um, I've done the first robotics program and several others since I was in high school. And I've always loved playing with Legos and uh, basically anything else that would let me build something fun. And uh, now I'm trying to pass it on to my son. So I have a four-year-old son and he loves going to first competitions with me, VEX competitions, Lego League. Uh, we watch BattleBots together. We've been to small scale combat robot events together and he just loves it. Uh, but I haven't wanted to get him into anything really too dangerous yet because he loves to touch everything. So um, I like having him with uh, 10 fingers. So we want to keep that going for a little bit longer. Uh, but I found a nice compromise in the meantime. Uh, so. I've been buying some stuff from FingerTech. I'll include information in the description down below. I have a Viper kit that I'm gonna build with him probably like next year or something. But you know, you can still get hurt with that. I wanted something kind of fun in the meantime. So they actually came up with this new uh, science salad kit that you can find on their website where it's all wooden and it's lightweight materials, not really held together with any crazy fasteners. So it's easy for a little kid to put together. Grown up can put it together real quick. So if you're just looking for something fun to screw around with and you want a robot that's based out of simple, easy parts that is buildable and runnable immediately out of the box, it's a pretty good little setup. So what I ordered was the Sawfish Kit, which is an emulation of the robot Tombstone that you have seen popularized by Ray Billings and his team Hardcore Robotics on BattleBots. Um, but obviously, lots of robot builders have built similar robots to this over the years. So they call it the Sawfish, and like I said, I'll put links down below. Um, I recommend you guys go check it out. Uh, FingerTech makes really good products. I've bought stuff from them in the past, and um, everything is very economical. They ship from Canada, and it comes quick. So uh, this isn't really an unboxing video. This is more just the introduction, uh, because after I show you the parts, we're going to go uh, to my son and I building the robot, and then we'll obviously drive it after. So. You know, right out of the box, they give us some fun stickers. My son loves stickers. Um, they package everything up real quick and easy for you. So all every fastener and little piece you need is all in a little baggie. Um, you get two basic wheels. You know, they get some some kind of rubber uh, grip. We'll see how well it does on the um, the pergo floor we have down in the basement where I plan on driving. I don't know if that's really going to grip too much, but we'll find out. Uh, they provide a battery and a charger. So I'll make sure I charge this up tonight because I plan on building it tomorrow. And if there's anything I know about a four-year-old, I'm gonna to wanna to drive it the second it's done. We're not gonna to wanna to wait for a battery to charge. Um, what's neat is they actually include a controller. So there is the circuit board for the controller and there are multiple buttons that are programmed through and there's a small little antenna in there. And you actually build your controller, much like the robot, with laser cut perforated wood. So you can tell that some of the stuff's just kind of floating in there. I'm gonna leave this all together because if there's one thing I know about my son, he loves to take stuff apart. So whether he wants to do this as a job or he gets frustrated doing something else and wants to be semi-destructive, this is gonna be his task tomorrow. But as you can see, the circuit board goes into the controller and you actually build it right there in front of yourself. Uh, then they include the circuit board with the motors you get a left and right drive motor, and then there's the weapon motor down below. It's all connected on here, antenna here, battery connector, um, and the power on off. Uh, pretty slick. And then they include uh, pieces here. So you can see here's the front of the wedge where the weapon gets mounted, um, part of the back of it. Then here you get your bar, some motor connectors. They actually include a little wrench that you can pop out and they give you a screwdriver for putting the rest of the stuff apart, uh, together. And they actually include uh, two batteries right away for the controller. So as you can see, everything that you need is right out of the box. Uh, this was 65 Canadian dollars. Um, shipping wasn't too bad, came down real quick from uh, Canada. Now that we're after Christmas, everything's shipping nicely. Um, and FingerTech always does a good job packing everything up real quick and sending it out. Um, so I'm gonna, um, kind of tidy everything back up, charge the battery, and then we'll, uh, we'll dive right into building. So, uh, enjoy. Hey everybody. So as you can see, we're pulling everything out of the box. Uh, Liam and I are gonna check out all the different pieces. 
Uh, we got our laser cut boards that we showed you before. Um, this is all just packaging, so we'll get rid of that. And we're going to now follow the instructions and we're going to build this up and we'll show you later. All right, so uh, let's do a time lapse video. You can watch us build it step by step and uh, we'll check it out in a couple minutes as a completed robot. All right, so we're taking a quick break uh, while we were building one of the leads from the uh, motor broke off just by touching it. So we're going to solder it back on um, and then uh, let me just get the soldering iron heated back up and we'll get right back to the assembly video. Not the cleanest job in the history of BattleBots, but that will do. Remember, I am a mechanical engineer. I don't solder that often. You want to try hitting one of the boxes? Here, hold on. You ready? Do it again. Get the happy face up. Uh -huh. Is it working? Uh -huh. Ready? Go get it. Can you drive it? There you go. So do it like you did your green robot in your bedroom yesterday. Turn it and now drive it forward. And spin and hit it, right? <laughs> Here, try drive forward. I don't know if it's gonna pop a balloon, but you can try. Okay. So remember, spin it up first, fast, and then drive into it. You want to get a lot of energy in that blade. So hit it with the left left uh, finger. Spin it up and then drive into it. So the build was a lot of fun. Uh, the sawfish kit overall from Finger Tech was really cool. Um, I'm gonna kind of break down some of the pros and cons that I noticed as we were building. Uh, we'll start with the controller. So super cool. I mean, it's just built with laser cut basswood. Super simple. Um, it's perfect, you know, for an adult. I have smaller hands uh, to control. Uh, it was a little tough for my son, a four-year-old, so what might be neat in future options is to maybe have two sizes, have like a little kid size and then a grown up size. And when you buy it, you know, either you can spec out which one you want, or if you consider for the cost, you know, I'm sure it wouldn't cost them too much more money to include two variants. And then you could have the same guts inside. 
and just swap them back and forth. Uh, but either way, uh, for the money and how easy it was to build, super straightforward. Um, basically just, you know, mine was inverted. So this is forward and back, left and right turns. And then this is one direction for motor spin and the other direction. Um, battery compartment is right here. This is kind of tough because the tolerancing on their laser cuts were very tight. Um, I've tried to like pry this off and I literally can't get it off now. So whenever I go to pop these batteries out, I'm probably gonna end up breaking this and then they'll just be exposed, but I don't really care. Um, so yeah, that's the controller. Um, the Sawfish robot itself, very cool overall. Uh, like I said, it's kind of your typical bar robot, uh, you know, very similar to Tombstone that you probably see on the TV and battle pots. Um, very straightforward, super easy to put together overall. Um, you know, the bar is just two layers uh, screwed together, simple rubber band. I didn't think it was gonna work that well, but these little elastomer bushings actually do a pretty decent job of holding it all together. And, uh, you know, basically your forward connection point, if you lean forward, it is just these little dowel pins. So depending on if you're driving on like a nice floor, I'd be careful because that might scrape it up. But if you're driving on, you know, just like a basement floor or something like we did, you're probably not gonna care too much. Um, which does raise a second point. They include one universal wheel. Um, it'd be kind of cool if they threw in two so you can flip your robot and still drive just as easily. Um, what was cool is straight out of the box, this is very easy to put together. Anybody can do it. Uh, wheels just pop on the output shafts for the motors. Motors come basically ready to bolt right onto little segments that they give you uh, to bolt in here. Wires are in a good spot. Um, the controller is all inside. Everything's pre-wired. Um, nothing was soldered in place. It's all with connectors. So if you ever have to replace something, uh, it's gonna be pretty easy to maintain in the future. Um, one of the big things I didn't like, and these are just tiny little things for me, is the holes for the motor mount um, were a little oversized for the screw. So the screws don't actually sit inside there. They're just kind of acting as almost alignment pins holding it in place. So if that's the case and you're doing this yourself, I'd say just use longer screws and then just put a nut on the backside. Um, also, I would get rid of all this Phillips head hardware and just go with hex bolts. Um, you know, they could have done it like Ikea. They could have had just an Allen wrench that comes along free. They do include a screwdriver, but it's a super tiny screwdriver. It's kind of hold, hard to hold and get actually any kind of good torque on it. Um, and then they actually give you a wrench to do the nuts. It's a wrench made of laser cut basswood. It's kind of funny. Um, good battery placement. Um, if you aren't really competing and don't care, I just leave these leads hanging out so I can charge it easily. Um, you know, obviously you can probably enlarge that hole a little bit and tuck it down inside, or you can even slap like a piece of Lexan or something on the back if you want to let them hang out, but leave it protected. Um, overall, um, I thought it was pretty good for the money. Uh, you know, if you are an experienced battle ball person or any kind of combat robotics and you have extra controllers, batteries, stuff like that, you know, you're probably better off just popping these out of Lexan or something like that, whatever you got lying around. But um, if you have your own laser cutter, you could emulate this and make similar pieces. You could probably 3D print stuff if you really wanted to, but I mean, most of this, you could just get like, you know, one eighth Lexan, quarter inch, and kind of cut it on a bandsaw and duplicate it and replace parts yourself. But if you are some educator without a shop and you have no tools, this is perfect. Um, really not a lot of money for what you get. It's all ready to go out of the box. Like I said, I didn't need any tools. I kind of wanted to use others, but I put it all together with what was included just to kind of say that I did it. And it was easy. As you saw in the video just before this, it didn't take long to build. Um, my son and I did it. I probably could have done it faster just by myself. But the whole point was I wanted to get him involved in building it. Um, you know, so it could be like his robot. So as you can see, we've just left it the natural color. Uh, he's gonna color and paint this after, so that'll kind of be fun. We'll give it a custom name. Uh, but yeah, overall, I thought it was a uh, pretty slick. And um, if you are, you know, a teacher or you're just looking to do kind of simple robotics with your kid, um, I highly recommend grabbing one of these kits. Uh, very cool. Uh, they have multiple things to choose from. We went with this just because we're big Tombstone fans in the house, and. Um, you know, it was really cool. And uh, I'm already thinking of building a tiny little battle box for him so I could put it down in the basement and he could drive around without hitting his toes. He did whack his knee earlier. It actually kind of hurt. Um, when you let this spin up the speed, it gets some good energy in it. Um, and I'll probably come up with some more little lightweight cardboard robots so that he can drive around and hit them. Um, but yeah, 
So overall, I give this a recommendation. I say go ahead and buy one if you are new to robotics and you're looking for something neat. Uh, FingerTech always has some good stuff to play with, and yeah, I think you'll have a lot of fun. All right, so uh, if you've built one of these or you're interested, um, you know, check out the comments down below, and um, let's get a conversation going. All right, until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later. All right, thanks. Bye.